I'd like to call to order the Hatfield Township Board of Commissioners workshop meeting for May 12, 2021. Roll call. President Zipfel. Here. Vice President Rogers. Here. Commissioner Andrus. Here. Commissioner Lees. Here. Commissioner Zimmerman. Here. So we just had a very nice ribbon cutting ceremony uh, for a public works project that had been <clears throat> in the works for many years. And we were applauding and, and uh, thanking a number of different people. And the last person we thanked was our township manager, Mr. Bibro. <clears throat> and the continued uh, gesture of thank you is to, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. Thank you. Bye. All right, is there a, uh, a motion for approval of tonight's agenda? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lees. Second. Second by Vice President Rogers. Uh, all in favor of approving the agenda that is before you, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we can move forward with the agenda in front of us and uh, up on the screen. Citizens' comments. Are there any citizens' comments on agenda items? Okay. I don't see anyone coming to the podium, so we're going to move to our consent items. Is there a motion to enter into the record the consent items that are listed in your agenda? So moved. Motion by Vice President Rogers, second by Commissioner Andrus. Uh, those items include the HTMA meeting minutes of March 9 and the police report for the month of April 2021. With that, I'll call the question. All in favor of moving those items into the record say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. And that is approved. We're going to jump into committee reports. First is Planning and Zoning Committee, Vice President Rogers. Thank you. Uh, the first item is uh, Bergie Kia on um, 713 Bethlehem Pike Land Development Discussion. Can you have that? Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. Uh, this application is for the, um, the Bergie Group. They have purchased property which used to be used by Country Time Sheds. It's approximately a 3.7 acre parcel um, and they propose to put a new car dealership on the property it would be a, it would be a Kia dealership um, the application um, has been reviewed by the County Planning Commission by the local Planning Commission and has received recommendations it's been reviewed by all of our township consultants and by the Planning and Zoning Committee and has received recommendations from from those groups as well um, there is a uh, copy of the latest CKS review letter in your packet this evening. Uh, the property has approximately 350 feet of frontage on Bethlehem Pike. Um, one of the waivers, and perhaps the, the, the waiver that I, I think the board might want to talk about a little bit, is the requested waiver for street trees. The Planning Commission discussed that waiver at length and understood that the, um, the auto dealer, the Bergies, like most auto dealers, would prefer not to have a lot of street trees along their frontage. Um, it, it blocks visibility of their inventory, and also the, uh, the tree sap damages the finish on the vehicles. The, um, the compromise that was reached with the Planning Commission, and I believe the Planning and Zoning Committee was comfortable with it as well, was to ask the applicant to put street trees at the corners of their property so at the at the property corner to the north and south and then to uh, install shrubs along the balance of the frontage so there would be shrubs and annual plantings along the balance of the frontage with uh, with two uh, deciduous trees at the corner at the property corners and I believe that that is acceptable to the applicant uh, there are there are other waivers, but they, they tend to be uh, sort of the, the, the rote kind of waivers that, uh, that we discuss on most applications. Um, we have the engineer and the attorney for the, um, for the applicant here this evening, along with representatives from, from Bergie. So if the board has any questions, I'm sure they would be happy for you. So the landscaping is consistent with most of the um, auto uh, dealerships along Yes, thank you. That's one of the things that the Planning Commission looked at is that they looked at aerials for the North Penn, um, North Penn Auto Group, the, um, the Volkswagen dealer and the Mazda dealer. 
which are the, the two other large dealerships that we have along Bethlehem Pike. And they, the Planning Commission felt that the, the type of landscaping that was um, installed as part of the Volkswagen construction, which is probably the most recent auto dealer that was constructed along there, would be appropriate. And that, that has the same kind of look that I just discussed as two, two areas with, with a deciduous tree and then, uh, and then lower plantings uh, along. So a question about without the waiver, how many trees would be planted, and with the waiver, how many trees? There would be approximately seven trees required, uh, street trees required, seven to eight, depending on spacing. Now with the waiver, there'll be how with many? With the waiver, there would be two, and then, and then there would be a substitution of, of shrubs uh, for, the, for the balance, and there would be and there would be a contribution for the for the balance of the the value of the street trees that that wouldn't be placed treating them and i know you just explained this but i'm just i want to clarity they'd be treated in the same fashion if they if they got the waiver they'd be treated in the same fashion as the other dealers same fashion as north penn imports which which again was the most most recent most recent, most recent car dealership that's been built in the township um uh annuals that's something to be recorded on a deed such that they're replaced annually from an enforcement perspective? Well, the landscaping is noted on the plan and it's, and as whatever's noted on the plan needs to be installed and maintained by the, by the property owner. Right. But annuals perish, right? Yes. Uh, any, that anything, that, anything that's put in on that, that's an annual planting would need to be replaced each year. That's, that's understood in the plan in the uh, plans and yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions from commissioners? How about from residents? Any questions from residents? Right. <clears throat> um, so, unless I hear an objection, we'll move this to the next meeting's agenda for consideration. Of course, uh, residents, if you are interested and you have comment, please reach out to your commissioner or to the staff between now and then. And I'm looking around to see if I have a consensus to move it to the next meeting for consideration. Yep, Aaron, let's do that. Okay, item number two is Durstein Business Center. Uh, Durstein, Durstein Business Center, uh, un unfortunately, the, the representatives from uh, Clemens, Clemens Family Corporation were not available this evening and they asked to be removed from the agenda. So they will be back in front of you in about a month. Habitat for Humanity, uh, 2714 Calpath Road subdivision. Yes, Habitat for Humanity is a project on Calpath Road um, to the, uh, it's north of the borough, nor northwest of the borough, depending upon how you orient. And if I would learn to turn around, I'd see that Aaron has it up on the screen. Uh, the star is the, is the location. It's just above Fairgrounds Road. Here you can see it. And What's interesting about this property and this, this line that I'm tracing right now uh, actually is a zoning line that separates the B residential from the A residential area of the township. That zoning line actually runs right through this parcel and pretty much bisects the parcel. It's a one acre piece, about half of it is in the A residential district, the other half is in the B residential district. Because of that, the property in its, um, in, in its existing state had been non-conforming, and it was further non-conforming in that there was an existing duplex on the property. Um, that, that duplex um, is being removed and replaced with two twin dwellings. Uh, you can see here, and, and this, this line is that, is that zoning line that I was referring to. Uh, on the A residential side, you have one building, two units. On the B residential side, you again have one building, two units. Um, one of the things that from the very beginning when staff was first approached with this, one of the things we recommended is that they consolidate all the driveways into one location on the Calpath Road frontage. Just because this is such a busy area of Calpath Road, we didn't want four individual driveways coming out to Calpath. So the, uh, 
The engineer has done that. He's shown one common parking area across the front of the units. There'll be cross easements in place so that each of those units will have rights to use the centralized access point. And aside from that, it's a, it's a fairly, fairly basic subdivision. It uh, will result in the four twin units, which Habitat for Humanity is developing and that they will then sell to, um, to their clients. The um, project, again, has been reviewed by the County Planning Commission and the Local Planning Commission. It was re recommended for approval by, uh, by the Hatfield Township Planning Commission and was discussed by our Planning and Zoning Committee as well. Um, the application also received relief from the Zoning Hearing Board just because of that split zoned condition. There were some setback requirements and some lot area requirements that needed relief from the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, Mr. Woodrow he is here. He's the engineer for the project and he can answer any questions that the board might have. Uh, relative to the project, but I, I, I think that's about all I have. One quick question. So at the, at the end of the development, the construction, I should say, these four will all be used as residential homes, not for use in any capacity for Habitat Humanity. It's not going to be an office for them. It's going to be all, they're building the residential homes for, um, for that purpose. Tim, could you go to the podium, please, just so we have you on the microphone? Thank you. So good evening, yes. Tim Woodrow here on behalf of Habitat for Humanity. We're the engineers for the project. And Mr. Ziffel, that is correct. Habitat will build these residential properties for sale to uh, local folks who qualify. Uh, Habitat does hold the mortgage, uh, but they will be for sale and be owned by, uh, by individual property owners. Will that, will that subdivision also subdivide into four unique lots? That is correct. Yes, so there'll be four separate tax parcel numbers and four unique, you know, um, pieces of real estate for sale, yes. Will there be an association form to maintain the common driveway? Yes, that, that is correct. Yeah, um, our attorney and, uh, and I know has reached out to Kristen, I don't know if Mr. Iannuzzi has been involved with that conversation or not, as to the proper form of that association. But yes, there will be uh, common ownership of the driveway. Uh, there is an underground stormwater management basin that will be maintained commonly as well. But things like trash removal, snow removal, maintenance of the driveway uh, will all need to be covered in that agreement. Um, they, generally, Hatfield Township residents pick their own trash collection company. Are you suggesting it will be a dumpster located on that property somewhere? To collect no, uh, that, that's not what we're proposing at this point. There would be four separate you know, trash cans that will be paid for by, uh, you know, by those residents. Uh, we're not certain of the method of collection, uh, but no dumpster, as far as uh, we're concerned, no before individual, you know, containers. Great, thank you. Um, how far back are the houses? Because if you're going to have the driveways in the front, you've got how many feet there, and then how far back from the road? Uh, I think the, from front, the road is the houses. The front yard setback is, is about 50 feet, so the houses are about 60 feet back from the edge of the street. Or the edge of the right of way, excuse me. Commissioner, just one interesting aspect of this, if, if this land development will get a, a approved, we've, we've talked to Habitat for a number of years and, and we're, we're going to put together a group of employees and commissioners and residents and volunteers to help build these houses. So it'll be a nice project where we'll all come together and support a, a, a good cause at some point. Um, association takes, is, does that take the form of like a homeowner's association? Yes, yeah, so typically all the concerns that you raise will be in the bylaws and the declaration will cover all that. I feel very confident all those issues will be documents. Not, nothing unique to it other than there's an association. No. All right. <clears throat> any other questions from commissioners, staff, residents? Any questions? Big comments? program, though. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> uh, next item is uh, Hamlin subdivision. Oh, Bob, hold on one second. Um, so I'm going to look around for a consensus. We'll move this to the next meeting for, uh, uh, for action. Yep. Okay. Aaron, if you would. Sure. <clears throat> Woodrow, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Tim. Hi, right, Tim. Next item is Hamlin, a subdivision 1337 Park Avenue. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Rogers. This is a subdivision of an existing, uh, lot on Park Avenue. 
It is a single family residential lot in the A residential district. The, the lot is just under 40,000 square feet and it has an existing home on it which faces Park Avenue. The proposal is to subdivide the lot into two. Um, Ken, can you just show Orvillas to give people a reference when they don't know where Orvilla, Park is? Orvilla Road is right here. Plains Mennonite Church is over here, where I'm indicating. So coming in Orvilla Road, this street that you see is a paper street. So this, this street doesn't, doesn't exist. Clearview Street is the nearest public crossroad that we have. So the proposal would be to take this property, which is just under 40,000 square feet, draw a line horizontally through the property and subdivide the front, the front home from the rear of the lot and then there would be a new home constructed to the rear. Uh, because, of the, because of the way that the house is situated on that paper street, they did need to go to the zoning hearing board for uh, two items, uh, two setback items and uh, one, one variance to allow the home to take access from a paper street as opposed to fronting on a public street. Uh, th that relief was granted by the Zoning Hearing Board. The, the project has been reviewed by um, all of the typical consultants and, and uh, commissions that would, that would normally look at it. It has been recommended for approval um, by everyone, there are uh, a couple of waivers necessary just because of the nature of the project, but um, they are they are mostly in the in the realm of landscaping. Other otherwise, the um, the project itself is is pretty straightforward. There um, there would be a traffic impact fee, and there would be. Um, The other, I'm, so, I'm sorry, the other waiver that, uh, that was requested is for the sidewalk requirement on Park Avenue. That's what I wanted to check quickly. Uh, there are no sidewalks on Park Avenue, so the applicant has requested a waiver from that requirement. Um, the Planning Commission had no objection to that waiver. And other, otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly straightforward application. Uh, Rachel Butch from Showalter Associates is here this evening. She's the design engineer. If you have any questions, I'm sure she can help you answer them. And um, other than that, that's all I have. And will, will the paper street be a road or a right-of-way? It will be a, a driveway. There'll be a driveway constructed on it. Uh, initially, the initially the driveway was going to the driveway was going to be shared up to a point, but I believe at this point, and Rachel can help me clarify, I believe at this point it, it won't be a shared driveway, but um, perhaps you can clarify that for me. Hi, Rachel Butch with Showalter. Yeah, uh, the the driveway, it will be shared driveway within the paper street of Krupp oh, Avenue, okay. but the idea is to extend the driveway for access to lot two uh, and keep it within the right of way of Krupp Avenue and it would only be 12 feet wide as opposed to 19 feet wide, which is where the shared portion is, which gives access to the lot one and lot two. Um, and it's, it's a shared driveway. So does that become an association too then? How's that driveway so be maintained? Part, part of the uh, zoning hearing board approval was a condition of that a shared maintenance and access agreement be prepared for the two lots. And that's, uh, the applicant's attorney has been working with the solicitor on that. Is that an association, John, or just an agreement? Uh, it's a shared driveway agreement, maintenance agreement, very standard. Addresses all and those concerns that will be run with the land, so any future. And that, and that driveway and the maintenance of that driveway is the responsibility of the homeowners? Yes. And I should add that the, the owners of Lot 2 are the daughter and son-in-law of the owners of Lot 1. So is it Spanier, the uh, auto uh, air shop going towards? Um... 
Span Spaniels is right here. Yeah, are they also using the paper street? They're using a different paper street. They use, they're, they're using Freed Avenue coming in from Orvilla, and they use a portion of Krupp, only this, this uh, block long portion between Welsh Road and, and Freed. There is, currently there's no one using the, the portion between Freed and Park. I think there's, it looks like there might be a driveway these, these maps are never completely accurate, but it looks like there might be a driveway from this one house that goes through the paper street. Or is there's two or three other lots that could actually come off of there, right? Up in, up in this area? Yeah, right there to the left. There's a quarter of the lot, and then there's a lot right across from the start. There is this portion that comes in off of or Villa Road up in here. This, this entire area is littered with paper streets. Uh, the, this area that comes off of Orvilla Road is a paper street which is currently being used. And uh, there's a possibility that, that that lot may be subdivided as well, or there may be a request to subdivide it. But this, that area that I'm, that I'm highlighting here is used as a, as a uh, driveway right now. So if a future development would want to use that paper street, <clears throat> is there an obligation for the two owners that have an agreement to allow them into that agreement to share that road? They're obligated. Every, whenever right. they come to the township for approval, whether it's from the zoning hearing board or whether it's through the subdivision land development process, we always require that those shared maintenance easements be executed. Understood. But can the first two homeowners extort them and say, you got to give me 20,000 bucks to have ownership or right way to uh, do The it. answer to that would be no. It's a covenant that no. runs with the land. All that stuff will be addressed in the agreements, like Ken said. Any, anybody who bought land pursuant to the original subdivision that created those paper streets has a right to access the paper streets. So someone in the front can't block them. So I, 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 monetarily, how, will that, how does that happen that a third party comes in and I want to use that bottom, I want to share those two driveways for you to get out? That this is a friend, hey, get together, you're going to write an agreement up, and you got a responsible for a third of the maintenance. How the fact does that happen? Again, that would be all in the agreement that would be recorded against the property. What Ken was saying, the original plans, they would have the rights to it. So it would be hammered out through the resolution process and the approval process. And I'm sure the fire marshal already looked at all this as well. Yes. Good with it. Fire marshal, fire marshal has, has looked at all of the applications we're discussing this evening and has no objection to them. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Residents, any questions or comments? All right. Uh, is there a consensus to move this to our next meeting? For Aaron, if you would do that. Sir. Thank you for coming out. Next item is Maplin uh, 7 subdivision of Bethlehem Pike Sterling Drive. One that I think, I think the entire board will remember. Um, we have, this is the north side of Sterling Drive where Sterling Drive meets Bethlehem Pike. Uh, you'll recall we had a land development for this area, which is two, two, lot 2B and this area, which is lot 2A. Um, lot 2B is, is under construction right now. Lot 2B has been approved uh, and will be under construction soon. The remainder of the property that the Mappin Group owns is this Lot 1 that I'm outlining right here. And the application before you this evening, there are actually three separate applications, but the application that's before you this evening is simply to take Lot 1 and draw a line through it and create a lot 1A and a lot 1B. The, the entire lot is about 26 acres, and what this <coughs> lot will do, or what this subdivision will do, is create one lot that's about 12 acres and another lot that's about 13 acres. And, uh, and then we have land development applications for each of those lots, which we'll be following in about a month. Uh, those, those applications are under review right now and we'll be in with those for land development approval. But we wanted to get this subdivision through the process first so that we're addressing the land developments individually uh, on those newly created lots. 
questions or the, comments? This is a, a <clears throat> this is really a, just just a very simple you know lot line, right. uh, lot line being created to subdivide uh, a 26 acre parcel into into two roughly. It, it sits literally parcels. right on 309. It is right on 309. Yes. I assume the motivation is uh, the current owner can't find somebody to develop the whole property, subdividing it. Acting additional buyers, I guess. I think Mr. Knappen's here. I'm sure he can. He, you know, he can explain to you what his his business plan might be. Uh, Mr. Knappen, could you go to the podium so we can record you, please? And, and Mr. Knappen, while you're walking up there, I don't think there's a day that goes by. Uh, Alan over here. Okay. I don't think there's a day that goes by that the commissioners don't get about 45 questions about what the, the future tenant's going to be of your current building. And I, I know there isn't one that you can announce, but. And I can tell you it's not Amazon. I, I, <laughs> that's what <laughs> most Amazon people is think. not in the, going into the building. Most common asked question in. It is the most common rumor. I wish I had a dollar for everyone <laughs> that I've heard that from. I wouldn't be here tonight. Um, <clears throat> we don't sell our properties. We build them to lease them out. Um, the reason why we're subdividing it is Rick, who is our engineer, was also, he was also here tonight. Uh, with Rick's help, we looked at developing the property as one large building with the grades. It didn't work out. Um, so we're just subdividing it. We're going to do two buildings, one of a roughly 100,000 square feet and the other one about 90,000 square feet. And the intent, like I said, is to lease them out, not to sell them. Thank you. Both of those prop well, one would be would enter and exit right off of Sterling. The other one would have an entrance. Is it anticipated to be off 309 or still off Sterling? Uh, both off. Bo Sterling. Both off Sterling. Both off of Sterling. That's correct. The intent with that with the original the original uh, creation of Sterling Drive out to 309 was to allow all of the lots to access Sterling Drive, so there would be no additional traffic out to. 309, you know, through a driveway. The only access to 309 would be, would be. Questions, comments? Residents, questions, comments? Again, is there a consensus to move this to next meeting for consideration? All right, Aaron, if you would do that. Sure. Thank you. I think that'll probably end the, hun Thanks, the hunting back there, too. That'll probably end any hunting back there, so. Hunting. Um, last item is 2801 Township Line Road. Uh, amend 801 Township Line Road is uh, the star that you see right here. Township Line Road is the, the red line that I'm tracing right here. Berge Road is this, whoop, Berge Road is this line. And what you see are two tax parcels. Uh, when, when this developer came through the, uh, the land development process, they received preliminary final approval for actually four separate construction projects. One was a small building to be constructed on the main lot that contains the Penn Beer building. One was an addition to the Penn Beer building, approximately 80,000 square foot addition to the Penn Beer building. And then there were two individual warehouse buildings to be located on this separate parcel. Uh, when, when the developer came through, they brought all of those projects through as one plan and they were approved by the Board of Commissioners as one plan. There is now a buyer for the portion of the property that has the two warehouse buildings, so 268,000 square foot warehouse buildings on this property and they have a buyer for that portion of the property and so they would like to have a new resolution passed by the board of commissioners to allow this project to be a phased project so that the the portion that is going to be developed first would be able to be phased and escrowed as as one project and then the the balance of the project would follow as a, as a separate phase um, so they have, they just approached us uh, a couple of weeks ago. We spoke with, um, with Ms. Pianzio, and I'm sure she's, she's filled Mr. Iannosi in uh, about this. And um, we suggested we could put it on the agenda 
today or tonight so that the board would have a chance to um, air any questions you might have about it, uh, any information that you might want before the um, meeting on the 26th. And the intention would be to have a resolution prepared to just create the two separate phases. So it would be the same approval that you did previously. It just allows them to construct it and escrow it as two separate phases. Uh, can it phases are the two stars, right? Phase yes. one is one star, phase two is the other star. Correct, correct. Phases will be developed uh, together such that any public roadway improvements or curbing or such would be done at the same time. What? Each phase has to be self-supporting. So uh, for when, when Brian reviews the phasing plan, we'll have to make sure that phase one and phase two are each self-supporting. The intent is so that if a developer only builds one phase and then something happens and phase, the second phase never gets built, that the first phase will be able to, to work completely from an emergency management standpoint, from a circulation standpoint, from a traffic standpoint, uh, from sewer and water standpoint. So all of that has to be reviewed so that they are completely separate freestanding projects. And alone, in each phase, we'll do the public improvements as required. Correct. I think we have a public comment. Yes. I don't think Ken saw me in the I back. I didn't see there. you in the back. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Amy Farrell, the attorney for, uh, for uh, MH Berge, who owns the properties currently. I did just want to clarify one thing, and I think Brian may have been about to clarify the same thing. When this plan came in and when you approved it initially, it had a phasing plan included in it that shows five standalone phases. Um, so that's really what we're looking to do at this point. So even though phases one and two have, been, have a buyer, the idea would be that each phase, each of those five phases could independently stand alone and be developed alone. So it's not two phases, it's five total. The expectation is that two of those phases get constructed right off the bat. So I think that's why the, the sort of two stars is what you're seeing. But there's no difference in terms of what was previously approved and what we're talking about now. There's no plan changes. These five individual units have all always stood independently in terms of their construction. So a developer could come in, for example, and post for phase one, build phase one, and then come back in and do phase two, or could do phase one and two at the same time. And, and Commissioner, just so we're clear, I only <coughs> start, it's just the two parcels involved. My, my illustration has nothing to do with the phasing plan. Right, just the so first parcel has three and the second parcel has two. Correct. Correct. <clears throat> you stop in the first phase and the other two phases aren't done, what public road, will the public road improvements be done with the first phase? So that's part of what Brian will be working out as he does, as he reviews the full plan as part of the final plan submission set. So each of these phases will have to be independent and will have to support itself completely. So all stormwater, all public improvements, everything necessary to support that phase. And to the extent that there are any improvements that have to be done I would assume as part of phase one to tie everything together, he would say to us, that has to be phase one. That's what I'm looking for. And, and, and that's, Amy's correct. I, I had an extensive conversation with Kristen the other day, uh, and that those are some of the details that we have to work out. Um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, but the first two buildings that they have a buyer for happen to be the ones that are closest to Bergie Road. Yes. And what I had said to Kristen is, it's it's a nice coincidence in a way, but to your point, Jerry, um, the relocation and the reorientation of the driveway that comes out to Bergie Road, that's something that I'm going to make sure gets done in, as part of the first phase. As I recall, if, if, the, if the project stops, you want to make sure that all the public improvements have been done. Exactly, exactly. And interestingly enough, the, there's not much that's happening as, as far as public improvements. There's not much happening on Township Line Road, um, in part because of the 309 connector and all that work. But the bulk of the improvements that they're doing to the frontages is on Berkey Road. So uh, again, I think it's a nice coincidence for the applicant because those are certainly the improvements that we'll look to make sure get done right away. Um, so yes, that those details will be worked out. But that's already been that's already been part of the conversation with the solicitor. Thanks. We'd never waive that, right? 
No, no. Well, it, it, it's not going to be waived. Uh, it, it, the, those improvements are part of the approval. So those will those will run with yeah, the project. I just, I'm, I'm thinking about a, a recent development up on 309 that moved, they already built, moved in, and haven't completed it. 309 under Villa Road. Yeah. They they opened up the Wendy's, but they never finished. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that disaster. That, that's, <laughs> those frontage improvements have not been waived. Uh, it's just been. Waving <laughs> of moving in before the improvements are done. Oh, oh, uh, we, we can discuss that with the solicitor. I, yeah, I just want to make sure we're, we're clear that. Yeah. We don't, I think we, we need to make sure that we're not doing. Understood. A Amy, do you. We, 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 I will have Kristen reach out to you, but I'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. And to your point, we'll, we'll make that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, there's no, there's no intent here to, A, we're not seeking any additional waivers other than what you've already granted. And, and B, the intent is to do the construction that needs to be done in order to occupy the building. And I think to Brian's point, quite frankly, I'm not sure how you would occupy any of those buildings without doing that Bergie Road improvement. So I think that's probably the, you know, that's step one. And then, you know, if other phases follow, they follow. If not, that, that work has still been done as part of the first phase. All right. Any other questions, comments? Staff, residents, any questions or comments? None, or we have a consensus to move to our next agenda. I mean, yeah, to our next agenda. Deb, you good? All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. That's it for tonight. I feel like I was parking Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I normally don't have a list like that. I know, I know. <laughs> so that's good. All right. Before we get to Parks and Rec, though, is Public Works <laughs> Committee Commissioner Lees. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first item on the agenda is the traffic signal maintenance resolution. Aaron, you're going to help me out with that, sir? Yes, sir. Thanks, Commissioner Lees. Uh, this one's fairly minor. I'd call it housekeeping in nature. Commissioners, over the years, you, you, you recall the amount of what they're called TE 160s. So anytime we modified a traffic signal over the years, even if it's the most minor modification possible, PennDOT required a TE 160. So we'd have to have a public resolution. Uh, I'll give you an example. Most recent um, that, that we had to do is when we moved a, a traffic signal, I think five feet over on 309 because a truck had hit it. PennDOT requires a public resolution. PennDOT recently changed its policy, and uh, it's good to see PennDOT pursuing efficiency because that's not always the case. But PennDOT's giving towns the ability to have a uh, to the board to pass a resolution that would then uh, enable us to make minor modifications to signals in the field quickly without a public resolution. Now, if it's a significant change, uh, a new signal or something that would be uh, more than just a routine maintenance there'll still be a public resolution required but this resolution that will be in front of the board in two weeks will give us the ability to make these quicker and smaller modifications and adjustments without having to wait for a public meeting um, and without needing a, a public resolution so we'll, we'll have that in front of you in two weeks and it will, it will help move along some of these uh, minor changes a little quicker in the future but again, significant changes, we'll still talk about it publicly and most likely will still be required to have a resolution attached to the application, but this is just for little stuff. So it's coming your way in two weeks. We can talk about it more then. Thank you, Mr. Pibro. That's all I have, Mr. Yes. President. Okay, Parks and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Zimmerman. <clears throat> We're programming. We're still doing virtual yoga. It's already begun. It's on Thursdays uh, in the evening. But has also already started, and that's on Sundays in the morning at School Road Park. Pickleball is starting on June 7th and running all the way um, to the middle of October from 8 a.m. to noon. Not brand new, but our, our new resurfaced pickleball courts um, will be ready to go and in use then. And um, there's a fee for that, $40 for residents, 60 for non uh, We're continuing our story time series book for May is Waiting is Not Easy by Mo Williams. Registration again is $5, includes the storybook activity kit. So children can read the stories and complete the activity kit individually or do it as a family activity. The 
pick up your books and activity kits. Um, again, that's already started between May 10th and the 21st. Email pictures of your family reading the completed activities to storybookatfield.org by May 21st to be included in our Storytime series post. And all registrations can be made on the website. We'll have summer camp this summer. We've got the summer rec camp. And again, it's all on the website about that. Please read it very carefully as there's many new policies, procedures, and calls for health and safety. Specialty camps, we're gonna have um, mad science and jumpstart sports to offer a variety of specialty camps this summer. And uh, it'll include sports and science and a secret agent camp. And then for those that um, would like a virtual camp, that option will also be available through Mad Science. And they're offered for two hours and include themes like science and slime, <laughs> space exploration and mysteries for residents and non-residents as alike. Um, Hadfield Aquatic Center also will be open this season and S's have already been available, so just check again on the website to get your either season pass, um, day passes will be available as well, but there's a whole procedure you have to go through, so make sure you read all the instructions on the website. And again, policies, procedures, and calls for health and safety reasons. Uh, a mention and a thank you um, for our Earth Day recycling event. It was very successful. We had over 300 vehicles at the Clean Earth site alone. Um, so thanks to Clean Earth for partnering with our Parks and Rec Department again this year to offer the electronic services to the residents. And their staff volunteered their time each year to help this out um, and make this event a success. And then also a huge thanks to McMahon Associates, the Boy Scouts, Representative Steve Malagari, who joined uh, some of the commissioners and the residents as we um, volunteered their time to help clean up the parks and trails during the event. And um, I'd also like to um, thank Carla D'Alessio, since she's here in our audience, for also organizing a group to, to come out and help with that cleanup as well. So thank you for participating. And, uh, Secret agent camp, I think we should all sign up for. I know. I was asking Chief if he was going to use that one, but. Uh. <laughs> I'm sure moms everywhere are excited about that slime camp. I know. Oh, yeah. Slime's banned in my household, but good luck to all those <laughs> who sign up for that. <laughs> all right, we're going to jump into public safety. Uh, we have a couple of items. Uh, first is a resolution to support the use of radar for local police. Aaron, do you have this one? We're going to allow our uh, esteemed Chief Tierney ah, uh, Chief. to discuss. It's unbelievable that he always throws things my way that we've never discussed before. <laughs> in any, in Likes any to manner. keep you on your toes. Uh, so there is, once again, uh, a push for radar for municipal police, and I think we've talked about it before. Pennsylvania is the only state in the country that does not allow uh, local police to use radar, including Alaska and Hawaii. So you can imagine, I, my entire career, we have talked about this virtually every year. That's a long time. <laughs> I mean, you walked into that one, you really did. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this will happen, and, and there's probably 1,400 technical reasons why this sh should pass, but I looked through uh, a list of things that I think are beneficial to residents and to the police department alike. So if you give me about an hour, I can go through this. <laughs> Locked on. Get going. There's really just a few. So the number one thing is safety. I think virtually everybody can yeah, take this off. Everybody can remember a time that you've been in traffic and a police car goes by you at 150 miles an hour <laughs> to pull a car over. And we always wonder, like, why is that happening? And we use VASCAR. VASCAR is a speed timing device. With radar, you get an immediate result. It's three tenths of a second. You see the speed. With VASCAR, say if a car is doing 80, starts over here, we have to wait till it gets to the second spot before we, we realize it's doing 80, and then we can pull out. So as you can imagine, now we have to do 150 to catch, catch up to the car. So that's certainly a safety issue I think is very important. Um, and Va VASCAR is just a standard um, protocol that we've been using for a VASCAR long time. Is, is an acronym for visual average speed computer and recorder so really when we use VASCAR we don't get an actual speed we get an average speed over a distance 
Steve, can you explain how? I think it'd be interesting for people. Cause it, cool. Yeah, I've it seen is. it in the car. It's very, I mean, it's so outdated. But can you explain how you guys use that? And I will with Vascar. One of the things we face in court is people say, well, how fast was I going? And we say, I, well, you were doing 60. But most people, they see the police. So they're like, well, I wasn't doing 60. I looked at my speedometer, I was doing 40. They were doing 60 in the beginning. But it gives us an average over the over the distance, over the, the pre-measured distance, or the distance while we're driving. So basically, a Vascar unit is a stopwatch. Time divided by distance. So it's just divided by time. Sorry, sorry, I got that backwards. Thank you. But it, we just flip <laughs> we flip time switches and distance switches, and then it gives us an average speed. With radar, when it's activated, like I said, at three tenths of a second, if the car is doing 80, you see 80. So there's no other interaction necessary other than you pull out and you stop the vehicle. No we're, delay. No delay. So we have, we have the human interaction or we have a distance. Say, if we're out on 309, you can imagine we're sitting in a parking lot timing cars between telephone pole, telephone pole, white line, white line. We have to wait till it gets past that second line or pole, and now we're trying to enter Route 309, which is a hazard for everybody, the public and the police alike. So that's the number one thing as far as I'm concerned that changes everything. It also allows us to go into, uh, say, a neighborhood where right now we don't have sight lines for Vascar. Trees, whatever we can't do. With radar, again, it's, it's one point. It goes to the car and it comes back to you. So we can set up much quicker if we have a residential issue. We can set up without having 16 cars involved where the entire neighborhood knows what we're going to do before we, get, we actually get around to doing it. So in that regard, it's better for, better for us and we can enforce the residents' complaints much quicker. Uh, radar also allows multiple vehicles to be timed at the same time. And you can imagine when our guys are on night work, every now and then two cars pull up to a light and they want to drag race. Well, you can only time one car at a time. And I remember getting car three and on myself at 114 miles an hour. I was like, well, what about the other guy? I said, I can only time you. <laughs> and, but now you can time both of them. You get both cars at the same time. So that's certainly a benefit. Not that we have drag racing all the time, but it allows multiple vehicles, allows vehicles coming at you. There are so many more things that we can do with it instead of just point A to point B. And so this resolution would be to, to assert our support for the ability for, for police throughout yep. the Commonwealth to be able to use right. ra radar. Similar to what we did a few weeks ago with the fireworks. There's right. two bills, one in the House, one in the Senate, that uh, would, would legalize these... Uh, this, this radar for the local police. So this resolution would support both those bills. It's also being supported by Pennsylvania League of Municipalities. It's uh, Pennsylvania First Class Township Commissioners, all the organizations that, that were involved and they all encouraged us to pass our own re resolution to support. And there is a group that stands opposed to it, which and because everyone else uses it already, so how it applies, but there is a group that stands. I can guess your answer to this, but I'm going to ask anyway. I'm assuming, Chief, that you support this. Absolutely. Yep. All I need to hear, do we need to move this to the next meeting, or is this something, because it's a resolution, we have to vote on it in that regard, could we have the resolution in front of us, right? Right. I'll put it in the packet for the regular meeting to be considered, if that's okay. No. Now, I'm only one of five. Is there, is there a consensus to moving this to the next meeting? This is more of a safety concern for both the police and the, the, the other drivers on the road. And the motoring public, yeah. Like, like I said, the, the number one priority, just getting out after people. Hazard for everyone. If the police pull out in front of traffic, we cause an accident, which we don't want to do. Or we cause someone else to, to have an accident, which we don't want to do. So safety reasons alone, this gives us one up all the way around. All right. I think we have a consensus to move that to the next meeting, Eric. All right, thank you. Okay, we have another two other items, although they are um, uh, really one and the same uh, in the sense of what the action items uh, we're pursuing are. Aaron, do you want to walk us through this, or do you? I mean, I'll, obviously, I'll hand to the motions, but yeah, sure, sure, Mr. President. Do you, I, do you, I, I don't know if you want to give any background other than we're we're filling two police yeah, positions. I'd, I'd be happy to. Go ahead. And, and, and by the way, the, the commissioners, you have an addendum with the actual names. We didn't put the names in the agenda. Didn't think that would be appropriate um, over the weekend and publicly. Um, 
So, commissioners, uh, you're aware of the process, but for the residents, just so you're aware, Hatfield Township's a first-class township, and first-class township requires a civil service process. Civil service process uh, was developed initially uh, to separate politics from hiring in, uh, of police officers. So the commissioners appoint a civil ser service commission. Civil service commission determines the process for hiring. Uh, Chief and his team are highly involved in the interviews and setting up the agility drills and, and the, the interviews. I think I said that already. Um, one thing to note, commissioners, is that both of these hires are replacement hires. So one is for a officer that already retired and one is to replace an officer that will be retiring. So the department is not growing. I think Chief's done a fantastic job over the years of, of managing his team and handling the um, you know, annually more more calls um, happen more incidents occur more situations and we all know it's probably harder than ever to be a police officer right now uh, but chief's done a really good job of managing his team um, and and balancing the the struggles of having adequate service but also understanding and respecting the fact that we're spending taxpayer money at the same time so these two are replacements they're ready. Chief was with the Civil Service Commission last week, and they voted to uh, approve this eligibility list, which the commissioners have in their packets. And um, Chief, the recommendation from the police department, staff, and civil service is for the commissioners to offer employment to number one and number three on the list, because number two has employment already offered and is accepted, is our understanding, Chief. And one thing, too, commissioners, I think you'll, you'll be interested in hearing is that the number three uh, person who will be offered a job tonight if the commissioners move forward with this is a, is a young man that does not have his uh, academy um, credentials. So he does not have what we call that Act 120 uh, police, police certificate training, which we just changed, if you recall, within the last four months we changed that from our uh, contract to open and cast a wider net for when we are recruiting police officers. So I believe this young man currently works with the sheriff's office, is that correct, Chief? So has a law enforcement background, but does not, has not yet gone to the academy. So he'll be going through the academy as a Hatfield Township employee, um, and then uh, we'll join the department once, once he's available and has, has passed um, through the program. So something that, Chief initiated to, to recruit more uh, candidates worked, and we're we're putting it to we're putting it uh, to, to to reality here in the in the next few months. And Chief, I think how many people applied for this compared to ones in the past? Twenty-seven applied this time around, which the last time we probably had almost numbers did did grow. We'd still like to see it grow. But it was certainly a better output than the last time. Great to hear. Not only that change, but Chief deserves a lot of credit. He, 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 he hit the ground recruiting. He went to universities. He went to academies. He went to a lot of community meetings. He reached out to a lot of different uh, groups from all different backgrounds to encourage them to apply. And he, he's done a really good job of getting a whole different type of applicant here in Hatfield. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. I'll follow that with we still have a lot more to do. Well, work in progress. We have a lot more to do yet. That's great, though. Thank you, Chief. Greatly appreciated. <coughs> All right. Well, then, uh, with that, I'm going to um, uh, proceed with both motions. Uh, Aaron, I can use both names now, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, okay. please announce those. All right. Um, is there a motion? Uh, I'm going to read each one, and then I'll take the uh, first and the second. Is there a motion to provide a conditional offer of employment to Thomas Sally as a patrol person based on the eligibility list certified by the Hatfield Township Civil Service Commission conditioned upon successful completion of a psychological and physical exam? So moved. Motion, uh, motion by Commissioner Andrews, second by Commissioner Lees. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that is approved. Second motion. Is there a motion to provide uh, a conditional offer of employment to Patrick Kivlin as a patrol person based on the eligibility list certified by the Hatfield Township Civil Service Commission conditioned upon successful completion of a psychological and physical examination? Motion by Vice President Hughes, second by Commissioner, um, um, 
like Commissioner Zimmerman. Sorry. <laughs> Zip fell and Zimmerman. I almost wrong too. No, I almost had my own last name with Zip fell and Zimmerman. I said, well, I don't think you should call you my, with my last name. Um, all right. So I will uh, call the question. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. That is approved. President, may I, may I thank you too. On the board is always very supportive of the police department between, from equipment to personnel and i don't think we could ask for any more that's uh, our pleasure it's our honor Perfect. oh yeah absolutely can we uh record that for budget time when chief said he's not going to ask for any more <laughs> for everyone else for myself i will <laughs> be asking for substantially more <laughs> replay that in october all right our, our last committee report commissioner uh, andrus left out today is the third time I have nothing to report. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're going to go to the township manager's report. Uh, Aaron. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a quick report tonight, housekeeping item, similar to what we talked about with the traffic signal. Um, a few months ago, you, you, you'll, you'll remember that uh, the board approved a maintenance uh, agreement for the trails that are going to be associated with the connector road that's coming our way. PennDOT has asked the board to consider two other agreements that are very similar in nature. Uh, it's just maintaining some of the, the public improvements associated with that connector road that is, that is actually going to bid in, in a month or so. But I think I've said that a few times in this room, but they, they, they say that it is happening. Um, so two housekeeping items, I'll have it in the packet in, in a few weeks, but it, it's associated, it's not a shared trail maintenance use agreement that we had. It was two other uh, items that are similar in nature um, that I'll have for the board for consideration at, at, at the next meeting, but not, nothing substantial. Um, and, and really the, the only, I think we talked about Township Line Road a little bit tonight with the, the 2801 land development, but uh, the only thing I, I think in the next few months we, we'll probably have a, a more um, specific update, but I'm told June, which is already in a few weeks, that the bids are gonna be going out for that project, which is something we've talked about in this room for a long time. and. 60 years in the, in the township, so. <laughs> People think it did. Yeah, so I might. All right, Aaron, anything else? No, that's all, commissioners. Okay. Thank you. Solicitor's report. Having flashbacks from high school physics when Chief was talking about speed and <laughs> uh, so. But no, the green tie that's up. Yes, yes, yeah, nothing to report today. I guess as you went to law school to avoid physics and other forms of math and yes. science. That would definitely be a yes. Uh, Commissioner Zimmerman, I think you have a matter that you would like to bring to the table. Brought to my attention that the Montgomery County Black Caucus is asking for county municipalities to recognize Juneteenth, which is June 19th, as a holiday or symbolic holiday. So in light of next month's hero, Anwar Sheikh Mohammed, who's going to come and speak to us, he's also going to be speaking on the historical importance of that date and day for African Americans. I'd like for us to think about um, making a motion for a resolution to recognize uh, this important holiday for our black community at that meeting, at that next meeting. That's a great idea. So, uh, okay, we'll put that, uh, I don't know if that we, do we put it on the agenda for consideration? Sure, we certainly can. Yeah, let's do yeah, that. Sure. Okay. Sure, and, and like Commissioner Zimmerman said, in, in June we'll be joined by um, Eve, help me with pronunciation. Sheikh Anwar Muhammad. And Sheikh Muhammad is a Hatfield resident. He happens to be the head of uh, the local NAACP chapter and owns a bookstore in Lansdale. Very active uh, in the community. And like Commissioner Zimmerman said, he'll be the Hatfield hero for June and he's going to give us a history lesson, um, help understand the importance of Juneteenth. And Chief and, and, and Sheik have a great long-standing relationship um, from over the years, and, and uh, so we'll hear about that as well. And those, that relationship's been for years and uh, has benefited both the department and uh, the community. So we will welcome him uh, in June. Great historian. He's taught me a few things that I had no clue about. So it's very interesting just listening to the man speak. Great. Well, we'll give him, certainly give him the opportunity. Forward to it. All right. Anything else? Citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments on agenda items or otherwise? All right. Seeing none, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lee, second by Commissioner Andrus. 
Uh, all in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks for coming out, folks.